Well, Hannah, this interview is all about getting to know you better. And uh, in particular, it's all about the church getting to know you better. So I have a series of questions, but we'll just take this as it comes and have a bit of a conversation. So why don't we begin by you telling us a little bit about what your life was like growing up? So I grew up in Cambridge with my mum and my dad and my sister. We lived near the middle of town. It was a great place to be. I have lots of fond memories of um, running around all the colleges, ducking in between tourists, cycling around with a huge bell on my bike that could go ding dong so that everyone could get out of the way. Um, yeah, I had a great childhood. What else is there to say? Oh, school. I went to a big all girls school in the middle of town, which I think definitely has changed who I am. I have loads of good friends from there still who are excited to hear that I'm back living near London so they're all at uni here so excited to see them. That's really cool and so you grew up in Cambridge but now your family are based elsewhere uh, why don't you tell us where they're based but also why don't you tell us where you live for your university as well. Yeah so when I was 18 my parents moved to Edinburgh took my sister with them um, they're living just outside of the city where the bridges across the fourth are if you know Edinburgh South Queensbury. So I've spent lockdown living with them, which has been a joy. It's a beautiful part of the world. And everyone in Scotland is genuinely so friendly. Love it. Um, so when my parents moved when I was 18, I obviously also moved. Uh, I went to Manchester. I did three years of a maths degree, which was a great time and another great city to be in. I feel like I've had the privilege of enjoying lots of different places in the last few years. That's really cool. And now you're in... Uh, Wallington, Sutton, South London, the place to be. That's, uh, that's great. So um, Hannah, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you became a follower of Jesus? Uh, mm. what, what's your story in regards to your faith? Mm. So I'm really thankful that I can't really remember a time before I heard about Jesus. My mum and my dad are Christians and they always took us to church and talked about Jesus at home so I always knew but I think for a long long time while I was a child and my early teens all it was really was knowledge to me I don't think I'd ever like grasp the fact there was more than a story it was more than just like people saying things and that actually if I wanted to be a Christian and to follow Jesus it meant doing something as well as just kind of thinking and knowing. Um, so I'd say I probably really understood what it meant to follow Jesus when I was 15 or 16. Um, it wasn't like a big bang eureka kind of moment, but looking back, I can see that that's kind of when it happened. And since then I've been doing my best with God's help to mature and grow up. Uh, to understand more and more about who Jesus is and what it actually means to follow him. Yeah, I like that. I think it's often common, isn't it, in uh, for children that have grown up in Christian circles or families um, and in the church to have that moment where it goes from head knowledge to heart knowledge and your progression in faith with Jesus kind of goes to the, like the next level, you could say. It's really cool. Um, so Hannah, this year we're doing uh, something called Name Him, which I'm sure you're aware of by now. Uh, we're trying to grow in confidence in naming Jesus. And so I wonder whether there has been a particular person from uh, your upbringing or in recent history who has done just that, who's named Jesus to you or has been particularly um, prominent in telling you about Jesus. I think... One particular person who comes to mind was one of the people at the church we went to in Cambridge when I was maybe 14 or 15. Um, she started meeting up with me and another one of my friends from the youth group and we would read the Bible together before church on a Sunday afternoon. And I think the way that she talked about Jesus was so different from the way that I thought about Jesus that she the way she was with me and the way she clearly was with Jesus I think prompted me to take that first few steps from head knowledge to heart knowledge mm -hmm. I think 
she had a knowledge of Jesus that wasn't just from words on a page. It was from having prayed and having had answers to prayer and through having like had contact with other Christians who really knew Jesus as well. And she just had a kind of richness to her understanding that I just wasn't able to have before I really knew Jesus. So I'm really thankful to God for putting her in my path and using her in that way. Amazing. That's really encouraging, isn't it? Isn't it? That's brilliant. Brilliant to hear. Um, and so Hannah, I wonder whether you have any uh, a story to share relating to your faith uh, and in particular God's goodness, his grace. Um, how has he been working in your life? Uh, or maybe a Bible verse that is particularly helpful for you. Mm. I think looking looking back over the last few years one of the big ways I've seen God's grace to me is in just how circumstances have turned out I think when I was 17 18 and deciding like what to do next after school I was a Christian but kind of still a baby Christian I wasn't really sure like what God's priorities for me would be or how to use that to make decisions. So I sent off my university applications and they all came back and it was all like bubbling along. And I think I hadn't really thought about how my faith should interact with the decisions I was making. Um, and results day came and I got good results. So I was happy with them, but I didn't get into the university that I put as my firm choice. And I think at the time I was like, oh, it's okay. I'll just go on to university. It didn't hurt me too much. But looking back, I can see that that was definitely, it was God that made that decision that set those results and put that the way that it was. Because if I'd gone to the place I wanted, I would have studied hard. It would have been fun, would have had a great time, but I would have done so much studying that I wouldn't have had as much time to study the Bible as I did in Manchester. And looking back over my degree, the maths was great, but actually the things that were important to me was the time that I spent at church, the relationships I made there, stuff I did with CU, all the time I got to spend studying the Bible. And I'm so thankful to God for the way that I can look back. And that was my uni experience rather than just being like nose to a bunch of maths textbooks. Yeah, that's really cool to hear you say. It really um, makes me smile. Uh, that phrase you said about it, that being your uni experience. I hear uh, young people often speak about going to have the uni experience, uh, but amazing to hear that your uni experience, the highlight was church, studying God's word, uh, spending time with other Christians. That's really cool. So Hannah, we've heard that you grew up in Cambridge, your family live in Edinburgh, you studied in Manchester. So how have you ended up here at St. Patrick? Why don't you tell everybody? A little bit about how you've ended up working here. Um, so initially when I signed up for the start of my degree it was four years long. I had a master's at the end and I hadn't really thought about like I said the decisions I was making. I just did what seemed best at the time but last was it last summer? Yeah so like 12 months ago I was on camp um, and I've done the same camp as Jen and Graham and as Lorna for many years and we were having a conversation I was in the car with Jen and with Lorna and we were talking about what I was going to do after uni and I I can't remember exactly who said what but I think Lorna said have you really thought about this master's like you're going to spend another year doing maths and I'm sure she didn't think as deeply on it as I then went on to but sometimes a thought goes in and it doesn't go out the other way, it stays and kind of rattles around. And this idea of, is this year of doing a master's in pure maths going to be as valuable to God's purposes as a year working at church, a year reading God's word more, a year serving him, a year like getting ready for the rest of a life of being part of God's people. And I think the answer pretty clearly, as I continue to think, was no, it's hard to justify a master's in pure maths, which I don't need and wouldn't use um, when I could be spending a year investing in God's purposes more directly. 
So that's how I ended up deciding to spend a year like I am and how I ended up in Wallington. Well, I texted Lorna and said, Lorna, I can't stop thinking about what we talked about. And she was like, oh, why don't you come and visit down here? So I did. That's really cool. And you came, you had a look around and now you've started. And as, as part of your role with ministry training, you're also doing some studying with Corn Hill, aren't you? And um, like, so what are you excited about this coming year, both Corn Hill and ministry stuff? And what, what is it that you're excited about doing, uh, the prospect of doing this year? I think with Cornhill, I'm really excited to be able to have that time to do studying of God's word more formally. I've loved at uni meeting up with wise people, people wiser than me and hearing their thoughts, but being able to do it in a kind of classroom setting and hear from people who really, really thought through how to teach God's word is going to be so helpful. I'm really excited about it. I've had my first lectures yesterday afternoon and this morning. And they've been such a joy. Um, we're looking through the Gospel of Mark as the first book we're doing and seeing all these links of things that Jesus does and why he does them and why Mark writes them is so exciting. That's a big, big excitement for this year. And in terms of um, stuff at St. Pat's, I think I'm just really excited to get to know everyone and get to um, like serve God alongside alongside all of us as church family I think I don't really know what everything in the rest of the year is going to look like but I know that God is in control and we're working for him so it's going to be exciting. That's pretty cool well we're certainly excited to have you why don't we end with some quick fire questions which I'm going to make up off the top of my head <laughs> um, so let's start with food because we found out the other day that your favorite food is falafel to which many people will now be trying to figure out how to make falafel or where to buy falafel from. Um, <laughs> so let's start with food. Uh, are you a dessert or starter person? Dessert, definitely. Dessert, okay. Um, what is your favourite fruit? Probably apples. apples. Red or green apples? Green. And uh, do you prefer chocolates or sweets? Chocolate. <laughs> And then let's move away from food. Uh, what's your favourite colour? Purple. Last question then, Hannah. Do you have a nickname? Yeah, I do. So my name is Hannah Black. So initials are HB, which is what's written on pencils. So since I was like seven at school, I've been called pencil. Pencil. Okay. So if, if people from church would like to uh, kind of get to know you really well, they'll start to call you pencil. That's great. Well, we'll leave our conversation there and uh, do get in touch with Hannah and uh, email her. I'll put the email address on the bottom here. Feel free to invite her over for a meal or uh, sit in the garden, whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, I'm sure Hannah would really appreciate that. Thank you and goodbye.